It's a fascinating series, and I'm here with On The Dot correspondent David Schechter. And David, your first kind of part of this series takes us to one of the most beautiful places on Earth, Hawaii. So beautiful, what a great place to be, and it's where we start our journey to talk about the invisible problem. Earth, it is so vast and so beautiful. It can be hard to grasp that we could possibly ever alter it. Maybe that's because the largest force that's changing our climate is invisible. My name is David Schechter, and I'm your guide on a journey to explore how we're changing the Earth and how the Earth is changing us. This is On The Dot. We're going to the Mauna Loa Observatory, and this is where the carbon dioxide readings come from. And I, I'm like, I gotta go see that place. When it comes to office views. Thanks for having us up, man. Yeah, of course. Aiden Colton is crushing it. We visited him before a recent volcanic eruption temporarily interrupted operations up here. It's not the easiest place to get to, as you can see. No, it wasn't that easy. <laughs> it's not the easiest place to work. Um, it's 11,000 foot elevation. You know, every time you take a breath of air, you're breathing in a third less oxygen. Too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is what drives climate change. And for the last 65 years, scientists around the world have relied on the carbon dioxide measurements taken on Mauna Loa. Aiden is the guy who takes them and he invited us to come along. This is the carbon cycle um, NOAA portable sampling unit. Um, and what we're doing here... Kind of looks like the nuclear launch codes might also be in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> luckily they're not. Aiden's um, telling me the air up here is what makes this remote location so important. We're more than 11,000 feet up, far above any ground level pollution from communities below. And we're surrounded by 2,000 miles of ocean. So by the time air makes its way here, it's been blended with air from across the globe. All right, so we'll just hold our breath, just because that's what I usually do when we get like 10 seconds. But once I close it off, we're... We have to, we, we have to hold our breath? It, it's very hard to affect it, but no, we don't want to contaminate. Tell me when I have to hold All my right, breath. So. I looked over at you and I'm like, I don't think you're going to be able to do this. Chance. Hold your breath. I couldn't hold it. I had to breathe. These samples gathered once a week will be sent to a lab for analysis. There's also a tower another 140 feet up that pulls and analyzes samples 24 hours a day, determining how much carbon dioxide is in the air at such a high altitude. You have all this research from this location. What story does it tell? Our job is to, is to present the facts. And the fact is that carbon dioxide is increasing and it has been increasing since we started monitoring it. Starting in 1958, this graph of samples taken in Hawaii shows the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere rising year after year after year. Now let's go back in time by 800,000 years. By studying things like ice core samples, ocean sediment and tree rings, scientists have a good idea how much carbon has historically been in the Earth's atmosphere. It goes up and down over time, but it's never crossed this line. And now, let's bring things back to what's happened in the last 65 years. The CO2 in the atmosphere has never been seen this high in, in human history. It's harder and harder for me to speak to uh, people like yourself and be optimistic. I want to see some change and I want to see it start to plateau. 